Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Pandas Training for Beginners. In this episode, we are going to analyze Stack Overflow survey data and produce some plot like this, JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS, and all that. It's very easy in around 10 minutes. So you can go to insights.stackoverflow.com forward slash survey to download the 2022 survey um, CSV there. And once you've downloaded that, you can go to your Colab uh, for Google that we've been using during the past uh, couple of uh, days and just drag and drop your CSV file there. Now, once you've done that, let's go up there. As always, we need to import pandas as PD just to give it an alias, a shorter version, shorter form. Then the, the next thing we did normally was to read that CSV file by using this method, pd.read underscore CSV, the name of our CSV file, and store this inside a data frame we just called df. So we need to run that as well. Now, just to check how many rows or columns this big uh, database has, data set has, df.shape, and you can see 73,000 rows and 79 columns. Well, that is huge. We can also get a more technical uh, piece of information by dot info method on our data frame. And you can see the name of all the data frames here. So we have 73,000 uh, rows, 79 columns. These are the names of the columns, how many null or non-null values they have and the data type here. That's a lot to work with. Okay, but I'm not interested in all of them. So I will show you why. Now, if I want to, um, we, we want to check the first five rows, we use dot head method. And if I run this, you can see that we have these response IDs, uh, these are the columns, some of them are not a number, the missing values here, and all that information there. Now let's also check the names of the columns by dot columns. So we I talked about all these in previous sessions. You can see the names of the columns. Okay, so what I'm interested in is the language that these respondents have worked with, the databases they have worked with, and the maybe web frameworks, web frameworks they have worked with. So I want only these three columns. Now, to select a subset of all this data set, we can create another variable. Let's just call it again df. And this df data frame is going to be from the old data frame. And since we are going to select several columns, we need to use double pair of um, brackets here. And languages, language have worked with, web frame have worked with, and database have worked with. So we are going to save these three columns or a series into this data frame. Now I run this. And here, if we just uh, show the first two rows, what dot head, you can see this is it. We have not any information here, but this guy has provided JavaScript and TypeScript. Okay, now I want to check the values under this column. So for example, we have JavaScript TypeScript. Okay, what else do we have there? And how many are there? So to do that, we use dot value underscore counts. I'm going to do this on this column. So let's see. Wow, we have a lot here. And these three dots means there are a lot in between that cannot be shown because that's a lot. So we have, for example, this value, this, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, this combination has been used the most by 1,000 people. Python, like this, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, by 900 people. Uh, with PHP and, My and SQL, you see these combinations. Okay, so these are the most kind of popular um, combinations of languages people have worked with. Now, let's take a look at the web frameworks now. So I'm going to do the same thing on the web frames they have worked with. So we can see we have React.js, then Node.js, jQuery, Node.js, React.js, Flask. Okay, interesting. So these are also the most popular ones here or the ones that people have worked with the most. 
Now, another thing is, as you can see, there is something, uh, there's this semicolon here. And let's say I just want to know how many times JavaScript has been mentioned. How many people have mentioned JavaScript? Like this, I cannot read it because it's also contained inside this, also inside this. So I just want to know, for example, how many times JavaScript has been mentioned. And you can see they're separated by these semicolons, right? So I can split all these values based on the semicolons and put them in different columns. So let's do that here. I want to say JS bool, which is for just JavaScript Boolean, equals the languages they have worked with column. And I'm going to apply these two methods. Dot str, it's a string method because it's a string after all, right? It's an object, this is a string. And if that is string, that, uh, val that cell contains JavaScript return false or or true if it contains JavaScript return true if it doesn't contain JavaScript return false and then we'll see how many of them contain JavaScript how many people have mentioned JavaScript and how many have not now I'm going to run this and now everything has been mentioned here right so let's just get rid of this for now so I'm going to count the values now of these true and false how many people have mentioned how many not now if i run this you see i have forty-six thousand people say mentioning javascript in the languages they have worked with and twenty-four thousand have not another way is to normalize the, the data to see based on also percentages now if i run this normalize equal true you see now it's just out of one there is 65 percent of people have mentioned JavaScript and 34% have not mentioned JavaScript. So now you can do the same with Python and other technologies as well. Now, what I said before, I wanted to, to split all these languages. I want to, for example, put PHP in a different category, SQL in different category, JavaScript in different, and then count all of them. Like count all the mentions of JavaScript, all the mentions of PHP and others, and then compare them. So I need to split them by semicolon, and then I need to put them in separate columns. So now that's what we're going to do here. So I created this uh, variable languages under this column, language I've worked with, again, .str, to do some uh, like on strings and we want to split that cell based on semicolons so again here for example we have semicolons okay now separate this from this because there is semicolon here and then expand equal true to put them into different columns and then save all that into languages. Now let's run this. And let's just also um, see the first five rows of languages. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we have all this weird, not a number or missing values in JavaScript, TypeScript, look. Now it's working. So we have all these different technologies in different cells, great. Now we can stack them on top of each other and then count the number of times they have been mentioned. So we can use the languages.stack and let me show you what it does. Let me get rid of this. So if languages.stack, if I run this, you see now we have all the true values, all the, um, the cells which have some value in it and stack them here. So we have JavaScript, we have TypeScript, we have C-sharp and all that. But also again, we have JavaScript. So now we need to count values, the, the number of times JavaScript has mentioned here by dot value dot counts, right? And then let's see what happens. Now, JavaScript 46,000 times, HTML, CSS, 39 SQL this many Python J TypeScript Java and you can see all these languages isn't it awesome so I don't want all of these so maybe the first 20 languages or let's just say the first yeah let's say the first 20 languages 
and I have this. Now let's save these first 20 languages into this variable of first 20 equals this. Now I want to plot it. So to plot that, I use the first 20 languages, a data frame or series here, and I use dot plot method that pandas makes available. And what kind of chart do I want? I want a bar chart, bar chart. And here, I can also change the size of this uh, chart because let me show you how it looks for now. If I run this, you see it rather small. It's okay, but it's rather small. So I can just use fixed size, comma, fixed size or figure size, and 12 and six, and then it's a bit bigger. Now we have this based on languages, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Isn't it awesome? In yeah, around 11 minutes, we did it. So you can also try again with web frameworks, with databases, with the most loved languages and all other inf types of information, with gender, I don't know, with employment and all that. That was it for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening.